Amen. Thank you, choir, for that good reminder. There is something wrong with a grumpy Christian. We ought to be filled with the joy of the Lord, and they ought to know that we are Christians by our love. So I am glad you've come into the service of worship today. Listen, we have been so blessed already having Bobby Gale here. He is starting off at Solomon's Porch. We are sending him around all four services, and he is going to be dashing in here at the last second of when it's his time to preach. But he's starting preaching over there. So anyway, you are in for a real treat. Uh, for those of you who are guests, I want to say a special word of welcome. I've got to say, I have two friends, hold up your hands, that I married, you all just stand up, you all need to see this. I married them 33 years ago and they are still speaking and uh, are back with us. So let's just say how glad we are to have you here and let's welcome them. And we're glad to welcome all of you into this service of worship. Uh, as we together have come to, get, uh, to honor the Lord, I want to just particularly, you can check out the announcements in the bulletin. Uh, we're going to be taking up a special offering. We'll be talking about that later on. We've got these two baskets up here that will be for Bobby Gale's ministry in Kenya. We'll receive our regular offering at the regular time, but then have this special offering. But we'll tell you more about that later on. What I do want to say is this. We want to be aware that God's calling us to ministry over there and here. It's, it's not one or the other. It's always God inviting us to do both. So this Saturday, from 9 to noon, we are going to be uh, gathering together at, here at, at the church, down the fellowship hall, and then we're going to go out in ministry right here in our own city. So come along, and you can be a part of, we're gonna, I think we can do some singing in the nursing homes, and then we're going to be uh, maybe asking God what he might be calling us to do during that time. So come on and be a part of it. We want to be to have a servant heart. Well, before we have our prayer, I want to invite you to stand and greet those around you. Welcome them in Jesus' name. Don't wander too far. I see we've got two guests here, Steve and Marcy from Lakeland. No, Lakeland. They are from uh, the country of Florida. And so uh, would you make them welcome? Greet those around you. If there's somebody you don't know, uh, introduce yourself to them. Let's stand and greet one another. Let's all come back together and let me have a, a prayer with you. You remember the old E.F. Hutton commercial? When E.F. Hutton speaks, everybody listens. Apparently when I speak, nobody listens. So as you work your way back, how about let's have a word of prayer together. Well, Heavenly Father, this is probably a, a pretty good representation of how we are most of the time. We are always frantically running about and jabbering, and it's hard for us to hear your voice. Well, today, uh, we thank you that all the jabbering is because we're with people we love, and that's a great thing. But now we want to get quiet enough to hear your voice, and we want to be joyful enough to sing that you would hear our voices. So come, Holy Spirit, fill us with your joy, and let us see in this time the very vision of God with us. Amen. Well, let's stand and uh, sing together and bless 
the Lord loud enough that the Baptists hear it and Amy's up here, all the children who are going to Children's Church, you can come on right now and go with Miss Amy. Please remain standing and join me in the affirmation of faith. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, judge hope in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. seated. I invite you now to go to the Lord with me in prayer and bow your heads. Dear Lord Jesus, you call us to follow you as disciples. Help us to do so wholeheartedly without considering any cost we might bear. You ask that we proclaim your gospel of hope and salvation not only here at home but wherever our travels may take us. Teach us to be faithful evangelists in both word and action. You've given us many spiritual and material blessings. 
Show us how to share our gifts with others and inspire us to follow your example of selfless generosity. Jesus, please continue to lead us so that we can provide hope, consolation, and loving care to all we encounter. We ask this to give glory and honor to your holy name. And now together we pray the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It's my desire to do some good thing every day. It's my desire to help the fallen by the way. It's my desire to bring back those who've gone astray. It's my my desire to shelter someone from the cold. It's my desire to do thy will as I am told. It's my desire to be like the Lord. It's my desire to teach some sinner how to pray. It's my desire to help some traveler find the way. It's my desire to lift up Jesus every day. It's my desire It's my desire to meet the Father and the Son. It's my desire to hear him say, my child, well done. It's my desire to be loved. Thank you, Kenji. Well, let's respond to that by standing and let's sing together, Forth in Thy Name, O Lord. You'll find the tune is one that you know. Let's stand as we sing. <laughs>
Amen. You may be seated. Well, I'll invite the ushers to come on forward. Let me just give a word of confession here. Uh, the moons don't always remember everything just as well as we might ought to. So when we were talking about the special offering, I forgot mine. And I had to text Betty and say, don't forget the check. Well, here's the deal. I never see a checkbook. I have about forgotten what one's like. You know, nowadays we pay everything online and so on. If you don't have a checkbook with you, but you want to be a part of the offering today, let me give you a suggestion. If you'll take, you know, a piece of your bulletin or something like this, this is for the special offering now later on, you can tear it off, put your name and how much you're going to bring. And you're not going to bring it on the 12th of never. Okay, you're going to bring it this week, uh, or, you know, you can give online or however. But if you thinking, oh, I don't have my checkbook, you know, don't toss in a five unless that's what you're able to get. I don't, I'm, we're not, you know, demeaning any gift. Uh, but if you say, gosh, I want to give more, but I don't have it with me, uh, you can do that. So just want to give you a heads up on that. Now, these good gentlemen here uh, are going to receive our regular ministry offering for the regular ministries that we have here at the church. So I invite you to give gladly and generously. Let me just, before we have a word of prayer, mention two things to you. You know, we're a family together, and we care about one another, and so we share each other's joys, and at times we share each other's griefs. Uh, Sam Jordan was meant to be the acolyte today, and we have a wonderful substitute who said, I'll be glad to do it, but Sam's great-grandfather, for whom Sam was named, Dr. Sam Coker, um, who was a great pastor in the North Georgia Conference, he went home to heaven this week, and uh, we did his uh, service for the family here, and they'll have a memorial service up in the Atlanta area later on. But there's an, another that we just want to keep in prayer. Many of you know Archie and Lee Griffin. Uh, their granddaughter at 19 uh, drowned, and they're having their, the service up there today. They're bringing her tomorrow for a graveside and she'll be uh, buried here. I know that you'll want to remember this dear family in prayer, and I just wanted to mention this to you. So let's go to the Lord now in prayer. Heavenly Father, we're glad that you are sufficient for all our needs. We are grateful that you give us the privilege of partnering with you in ministry through our service, but also through our giving and through our prayers. So today, as we give, Use this for your glory. We're so thankful for what Jesus has done. In Christ's name, amen.
Thank you, choir. Uh, our applause was silent then. That's, you know, if I didn't know better, I'd think the choir believed what they just sang. God does hear our prayers. And the simplest prayer of a child is heard by God. As a matter of fact, today, there are some children in the country of Kenya in Africa who are praying for God to do something. You know what? You and I are going to be part of the answer to that prayer. And I just cannot pass by without saying a special word of thank you to Cindy and to Linda for their uh, duet on Love Lifted Me. That's my testimony. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the water lifted me. Now safe am I. Love lifted even me. And I want to thank you for helping me to worship God. Well, I'm not going to introduce Bobby Yale except to say there he is, freshly having flown from Solomon's porch. I love this guy. He is just as rough as an old corn cob, and he is so filled with the Holy Spirit and with fire that I love being around him. Bobby, come here. He has a ministry that takes place uh, all the way from Costa Rica to Kenya to Ghana and other places. We're glad to have you here. Brother, let me pray with you. Holy Spirit, pour out your power on my dear brother and let your grace come. Grant to us all today to be lifted up again. Love lifts us and gives us the grace to lift others too. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. That is the prayer, you know, that love lifted us all. Love touched us all. Well, thank you guys for letting me be here. I was looking for my glasses in the other two services. I just found them. They're right here. Uh, so I want to thank you guys for uh, being right here with us. And the scripture reading that I want to use is uh, from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8, 9, and 10. It says this right here. For God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it. And this is the one I want us to key in. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planted, he planned for us a long time ago. Amen. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Folks, first of all, don't go on a short-term mission trip. Whatever you do, don't go. I went on a short-term mission trip when I was a child. We went to Philadelphia Indian Reservations, and as we were there, God began to do a new work in our lives. And uh, as God began to do this new work, your pastor, Bob and Betty, gave us an opportunity to be the, the first time I ever preached was in their church with St. Luke United Methodist Church, and Bob was the pastor. And uh, God bless Bob, he let me come and do it. I had such a good time and, and felt the call. And, and from that point on, we just have sprang forward. But whatever you do, stay away from short-term mission trip, whether it be right here in Valdosta or whether it be, uh, whether it be in Georgia or United States. Stay, don't go. Don't go. And whatever you do, definitely do not go on a short-term mission trip out of the country. Your life will be totally wrecked, and you'll never be the same. You'll have somebody come up to you when you go out, and they'll look at you, and they'll say, You are so fat. And I'll be looking at that child saying, What in the world is wrong with you? Mr., you are so fat. And I thought to myself, My Lord, what's wrong with this child? This child is rude. Even though telling the truth, I didn't want to hear it. And so I, I went back to the mission leader that night, and I said, what, what was, why did that child call me fat? He said, because you are. <laughs> and he said, he didn't mean it as anything ugly. He just meant it as the greatest compliment that he could give you. 
that you are really blessed. You can't be this big and not really be blessed. You understand? You've had to eat a lot of potatoes and a lot of other things too. And that's the truth. And while we were there on that short-term mission trip, I'm telling you, don't go. Whatever you do, don't go. I went and I was inside Africa and I saw a child and a pig drinking water together. Now, I'm a father, now I'm a grandfather. There is something wrong when a child and a pig drinks water together. And I began to tell the Lord, there's something wrong with that. And the Lord simply said, yes, there's something wrong with that. And verse 10 says that I created you to do good things. And lo and behold, I just told the Lord, anybody ever argue with the Lord? If not, I don't understand what he's saying. You know what the problem is? I just don't want to do it. It's not a matter of hearing what he says. I just don't want to be inconvenienced. Now, that's as honest as I can be with you. And so I told the Lord, somebody ought to help those people over there. And he said, you help them. And I said, what? Yo, uh, how can I help them? And he says, "Uh, because I'm God and you do it. And so I can tell you this morning, in that first little village where I saw the pig and the child drinking water together, they drink fresh, clean water today in Jesus' name. And the gospel is being preached. Hey, Bob. I see you all the way back to the back. Bob and I went on a short-term mission trip, and it changed my life, too. I won't never sleep with Bob. (laughs) (laughs) I'm just kidding, y'all. But we, we did go on a short term. But God changed that little village. But while I was in that little village, I heard the children singing a song. And the children were singing a song, something like this. Now, I can't do like you guys, but I'm going to do the best I can. And Betty, I'm not going to cut no CD, okay? I'm just letting you know that right now. But it said something like this. On yummy, yay. On yummy, yay. On yummy, yay, yummy, yay, mommy. Anybody know what that is? Bob does. That's exactly right. Let's try it again. See if you can get it. On yummy, yay. On yummy, yay. On yummy, yay, yummy, yay, mommy. You got it? What's wrong with y'all? <laughs> you don't understand the languages of the world? Gosh. How how about like this? God is so good. God is so good. God is so good. He's so good to me. On yummy yay. On yummy yay. On yummy yay. Yummy yay. Mommy. Amen. I'm so glad that God is so good to me. He has blessed me with every spiritual blessing in the world. I am blessed beyond imagination. I've had five gallons of ice cream before my brothers and sisters in Africa have even had a taste. What God has put on my heart and in my life is to serve the overlooked, the least, and forgotten. And while we serve the overlooked and the least and forgotten, God blesses us. But recently we had a little tragedy to happen with our vehicle, and that's where you come in as partners. And that's where you come in to make a difference. While we had a Land uh, Rover, and don't get excited about this Land Rover, uh, is, is a utility vehicle that we use. Well, we were coming back, and I wasn't in the event, but my collaborative partners were there. As they were coming back from the bush, getting ready to get on the plane, a car came out of the other lane and hit us head on and, had, and totaled our vehicle and killed the three people in the other car, the bus tumped over, and uh, our people just end up going to the hospital with bumps and bruises and contusions. But, you know, we are okay. But our vehicle's not okay. And as we work in Kenya, we do all kind of works. We got water wells that we place over there. Some of the water wells that we placed are so unique and, and critical that one young woman came up to me and she said, Bobby, is that water well really going to be for you? I said, yes, it's going to be for you. She says, is it really going to be for you, for, for us? And she said, yeah. I said, yes, it's really going to be, where, it's going to be your water well. She, and she's about to rub my face, and she's a, 
she's about to tear my face up, and, and she's just so intense about, is this water well really going to be for us? And we said, yes. And she said, if you had just got here 12, if you had just got here 12 days earlier, my 12-year-old daughter wouldn't have drank that contaminated water and passed away 12 days ago. The mission vehicle carries us to the places where we can serve the overlooked, the least, and forgotten. In one of the villages that we went in, it's, uh, we used the mission ve vehicle to take clothes. Now, I shouldn't tell you this because some of you may know these people, but it's always fun to kind of embellish the stories a little bit. I was at Allentown United Methodist Church. Anybody know where Allentown is? Bob's the only one, but uh, I'm glad the rest of you don't know. Anyhow, I went in this church to do a revival. And I walked in the church, and it looked like they had brought the whole nursing home to the church. The average age, and the, the average age on the inside was deceased. I mean, <laughs> there, wasn't, there wasn't one single young person in that church. And I was looking to myself, uh, my Lord, have mercy. And so the sweet, uh, the sweet lady came up and said, how can we help you? And I'm looking, I'm thinking, you've done waited too long. And so as we, uh, as we progress in this conversation, I said, uh, get a quarter and wrap a $100 bill around it and put it in this blue envelope and send it to us. And she just laughed. She said, that's the easiest thing we can do. What can we do to really help you? And I said, I looked at her. I said, go home and pray about it. She went home and prayed about it. And she came back the next day and she said, what if we sew dresses for you and you take them with you on a mission trip around the world? And I'm here to tell you, that little group of ladies has sewn, hand sewn, over 18,000 handmade dresses, short sets, and different kinds of articles of clothes. So here's the good news for you, church. It's never too late to get in the game with God. Where you're insufficient, God is more than sufficient. And God can do great things with you. And we take in our mission vehicle, we take those little dresses to little children around the world. And we uh, had a little orphanage and a, a little uh, school that we took some of those dresses with. And, and as we took those little dresses, and uh, what's kind of cool about these children in other parts of the world, uh, they appreciate what you do for them. And so we had them line up, and as we uh, had our help, and as we lined them up and we put little dresses on the children, a little girl came up and said, Mister, is this dress really for me? And I said, Yeah, it's really for you. She said, Mister, is it really for me? I said, Yes, it's really for you. She said, Mister, I never had a new dress before. And she took that dress and she squeezed it. And she shot off, and two or three more of them went in there into the dormitory, and they came back out. And as they came back out, the young girl who asked if the dress was ready for her, she said, she had this pretty smile on her face, and she said, Mister, is that dress, how do I look? And I said, baby, you are beautiful. And she put her little tiny hand in my hand, and the next thing you know, I had the other hand full, I had me about five new grandchildren, and we was just walking around the savannah. We just walk around savannah. I don't know what they were saying, but I don't even know what my own children are saying, except uh, can you send money? That's all I know, uh, you know, with my own children. But they just simply, we just went around. But that mission vehicle is used to take love to a people who simply need to hear that they are loved. The mission vehicle will be used to take food to the overlooked and to the forgotten in the sub-Saharan drought area. It's hard to believe. It's hard to imagine, you know, a place on earth that literally people are malnourished. But with Christian love and that vehicle, we'll take that vehicle and we'll go out and we'll service the overlooked who are malnourished. And we'll take that vehicle and we'll sit out there and we'll get cornmeal, and we buy it in 50, pound, 50 kilo uh, bags, about 120 pounds of corn, and we'll take it out there to them, and we'll give them a little something to eat. 
And we'll tell them that God loves them. And for once, they're seeing word and deed. And that little old vehicle makes a difference in people's lives. Another purpose that that vehicle will be used for is uh, for ambulatory services. Now, you and I just take this for granted. My next-door neighbor calls the ambulance about once a month. I'll just see him come over to his house. The light will be on there, and, and they just over there, and they pump her up with oxygen and, and make sure her diabetes gets back in order, and then they just turn around and go off. Well, in other parts of the world, they don't have that kind of privilege. One particular story that is a little uh, difficult to understand, a little girl named Naali, she went to, the, she went to a one-room school where they have no bathrooms. They just go to a one-room kind of block school. That's all it is. And she went outside, and she went outside to relieve herself. And as she went outside to relieve herself, a hyena came and grabbed her. And her father beat the hyena off of her. The hyena mauled her in her face, and the other friend was there, and the hyena bit the friend's fingers. And because they had no ambulatory services, no way to get to medical uh, help, the father's friend passed away. Folks, for a small amount of money, we can make a difference in people's lives forever. We can make a difference, and the kingdom of God will be prosperous and growing. There was a lady named Miss O'Neill. Some of y'all may know her from Savannah, Georgia. A few, a few years ago, it was on a February in Savannah, Georgia, on Broughton Street, there was a little kid. And he was just staring in the windows. And as he was just staring in the windows, she walked by and said, you're in deep thought, aren't you, young man? You know how sweet ladies are. They, you're just in deep thought, minding his business. And, and the little kid said, yes, ma'am, I'm, I'm just asking God to help me get some shoes. Miss O'Neill, being a refined school teacher, she had her little gloves. She took her gloves off, and she grabbed that little kid's hand. And said, come on inside. And so she went inside the store on Broughton Street, put that little kid inside the chair, and told the stockman, the, the salesman, to go get six pairs of socks. And so she went and got those six pairs of socks, and she uh, asked the stockman to go get some water. Now, you've got to understand, for a retired school teacher to be doing this, this is love in action. And she nailed down and she washed that little boy's feet. And then she put those new socks on his feet. And then she told the sales clerk to get the shoes. And she put the shoes on his feet herself. And then she just, being refined, just looked for her little gloves, went back over, and was getting ready to leave. And the little boy said, Ma'am, are you God's wife? Good Samaritans of Vadas, the First United Methodist Church. Are you going to be God's hands and God's feet today? So that the overlooked, the least, and the forgotten can hear and see the love of God one more time. Or maybe for the first time. I just want to let you know, thank you for what you've done. You're a generous church. You're a kind people. And it's just another opportunity to say, yes, Lord. I just want to tell you ahead of time, thank you for what you've done. And thank you for what you continue to do. And how you've enriched my life over the years. I'll never forget our, our times together. But you know what? It's not time to quit. It's time to go to work again. I hear the whistle blowing right now. Saying, come on, Bobby. And I'll be in Africa next Sunday. I'll leave next Saturday, but I'll be there next Sunday night. You know, it's a long ride. But I hear the whistle blowing. And I hear God saying, come on, church. It's not time to quit. It's time to go to work. Amen. God bless you. Good morning, good Samaritans of Valdox the First United Methodist Church in Prince. I'm Reverend Bobby Gale of Untilidia's Ministries. I'm the director, and I'd like to thank you for your partnership of the past and of the present. The ministry needs a mission vehicle to do the work of God in northern Kenya. 
the purpose of the mission vehicle will be to serve our water wells, which we have many water wells in northern Kenya. We also have a water ministry that takes containers of water out to the overlooked, the least, and forgotten. Sometimes women and children have to walk 10 miles, and with this vehicle, we can shorten that journey up for them. Another way that will be used is for a food ministry. We have a partnership where we take food out to the famine areas where the overlooked and the least and forgotten have been uh, able to receive food because the drought, because no rain, uh, it makes it extremely difficult for them. A third way that we'll be able to use this mission vehicle is to provide kingdom work We'll take pastors and mission teams out to villages and let them uh, be able to uh, give the gospel, share the gospel with some people who've never even heard the gospel before. A fourth way that we'll be able to use this mission vehicle is sometimes as transportation like an ambulance. Sometimes a uh, difficulty happens out there in the bush and people have no way to get to any type of medical facility. I'd like to personally thank you for your gift of love and your works of mercy that you have done. And I personally would like to just let you know that this gift will be used to further the kingdom of God and that souls will be touched and lives will be changed and the gospel of Jesus Christ will be preached. Thank you and God bless you. Were you wondering like me if they were going to get that thing out, car out of that mud pit? Bobby, you remind me of somebody I saw on TV. Uh, uh, America's most wanted. That's, uh, uh, anyway, but uh, we. <laughs> you know what I love about Bobby is his authenticity. He is going where the need is. Listen, we have an opportunity to join with him in that uh, uh, opportunity. So I want to invite you, just as God has laid it on your heart to give generously. Uh, we're going to uh, have a, a song we're gonna sing, and I'm gonna ask you, don't dawdle around, just come on and put your offering. We've got these two baskets here. Uh, our good brother Larry Lawrence is here, our church administrator, and he's gonna, as soon as we've got all the envelopes up here, he's gonna take off and uh, count them up. He's already got them from the first three services. And as soon as we've got this available, we're gonna post this on social media. So. Y'all be looking for that. Uh, but this is an opportunity for us to say yes to Jesus. This is not a demand. This is an invitation. And sometimes we think too small. Listen, we serve a God who is a great God. I remember this little poem that goes like this. Um, Thou art coming to a king, large petitions with thee bring, for his might and power are such none can ever ask too much. Let's not think small. Let's think big. Let's see what God will do, and we're going to bless this ministry. So let's have a word of prayer, and then uh, as we sing, just come on and, and bring your offerings on up. Heavenly Father, we are so grateful for the privilege of partnering with you. You know, we don't want for somebody else to say, gosh, we wish you'd come here 12 days ago. Oh, Lord, we want to respond now so that help can come now, so that people can, in the name of Jesus, be blessed now. So, with joy, this congregation that loves a world is responding. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, let's stand together, and we're going to sing Here I Am, Lord, and y'all just come on down and join with Betty and me as we give to God's grace.
Praise the Lord. Uh, I am so grateful to be a part of a people with vision and people with love. I would like to do something different than we have done in our other services. Uh, Bobby, would you come and kneel here at the, the middle? And those of you who just feel a heart for prayer for missions, would you just come on right now? We're not going to uh, drag this out, but just come. I'd like for you to lay hands on Bobby, and we're just going to pray for him. Uh, you know, he was kidding about not going on a short-term mission trip. We are going to have a short-term mission trip uh, with Bobby, and I'm telling you, it needs to change our lives. I grew up in India when he talked about the, uh, the child drinking from the same little water supply as the pig. I can see that. I've been to Kenya. I have seen children walking and searching through the garbage dump for something to eat. Listen, these things may seem like they're from another planet. They're from our planet. We are so blessed in America by the abundance that we have. We want to make a difference. And so you can just keep your eyes open. Would you join hands with each other? Uh, you know, somebody uh, said, um, uh, was, was ranting to a friend, said, well, there's so much hunger in the world and poverty, and why doesn't God do something? And the friend said, well, why don't you ask him? And he said, well, because I'm afraid he'll ask me the same question. Uh, you know, when God needs to do something, he's going to call you. He's going to call me. And today we can say, here I am, Lord, send me. So, uh, Father, thank you for Bobby. Thank you for his passion and heart for missions, for ministry. Pour out your Holy Spirit on him. And God, I pray for our congregation that out of this place you will raise up many who will partner with him, people who will not just give, people who will not just pray, but people who will go. And some will give and some will pray to enable others to go. But we're going together to partner with the work of God around the world. So pour out your spirit. We receive this now in the name of Jesus.